California imports up to 5 million acre-feet per year from the Colorado River via the Colorado Aqueduct, constructed in 1933. In a crisis, even with senior water rights, California could lose some of that allocation. And California faces a similar crisis with its groundwater, heavily relied on by farmers and heavily overdraft. For years, more water has been withdrawn than replaced, as well as with its reservoirs, depleted after years of drought. But California has options. As we have just seen this winter, as well as in the late fall of 2021, even during multi-year droughts, tens of millions of acre-feet rained down onto California via atmospheric rivers, but most of the water immediately drains into the ocean. California also has an 840-mile border, not including bays or inlets, with the vast Pacific Ocean, where a limitless supply of ocean water could be desalinated to serve its coastal cities. Despite all this potential, investments to increase California's water supply have been incremental at best. But this can change, and if it did, not only Californians, but the entire Southwest would benefit. Imagine how much easier it would be to balance the Colorado River supply deficit if Californians were no longer transporting 5 MAF per year out of the lower basin to serve Imperial Valley agriculture and Southern California cities. From a cost perspective, most supply solutions are financially affordable, but nonetheless quite expensive. For example, only about one-third of California's urban wastewater is recycled. Construction costs to upgrade every water treatment plant in the state that isn't already turning sewage back into recycled water for landscaping or even for potable reuse would cost about $20 billion and give back up to 2 MAF per year. Desalination is another option, but it is roughly twice as expensive as wastewater recycling. For an estimated construction cost of $20 billion, about 1 million acre-feet of ocean water per year could be desalinated. While it is the most expensive option, desalination has the virtue of being a perennial supply of new water, impervious to drought. What other options are there? In an era that may involve warmer and drier winters, with less rain and less snowpack, it is necessary to more efficiently harvest runoff from the storms that do hit the state. The traditional way to do this is via reservoir storage, but in stream reservoirs, those behind a high dam directly blocking a river cannot be allowed to fill from early storm runoff because that would render them unable to prevent flooding if there are late spring storms. Then if late spring storms don't materialize, there's inadequate reservoir storage and another water shortage. Offstream reservoirs, by contrast, don't block the flow of a natural river. They are typically constructed in arid valleys, and flood runoff is pumped into them during storm events. Using California's proposed sites reservoir as an example, for billion dollars for an annual yield of 500,000 acre feet per year, off-stream reservoirs could capture and release 1 MAF per year for a construction cost of $8 billion. But absent the capacity to capture large volumes of storm runoff and move it into these reservoirs, where will the water come from? A new proposal, the Water Blueprint for the San Joaquin Valley, authored by a coalition of San Joaquin Valley community leaders and regional water agencies, is a work in progress. The centerpiece of this proposal is to construct what are essentially gigantic French drains within channels created inside San Joaquin's Delta Islands. By drawing fresh water from perforated pipes situated beneath the gravel bed in these channels, flood water could be safely harvested from the delta during periods of excess storm runoff. Preliminary plans for this system estimate the cost at $500 million per 200-acre facility. The estimated capacity for two of these facilities would be 2 MAF per year or more, at a total cost of $1 billion. The blueprint also relies on the construction of a central canal in the San Joaquin Valley to transport water from the harvesting arrays in the delta to underground storage. Aquifer storage capacity in the San Joaquin Valley is conservatively estimated at 50 MAF. The projected cost for this canal, including connections to the Frank Kern, Delta Mendota, and California aqueducts, as well as facilities to recharge and recover water from the aquifers, is $500 million. 
This idea has extraordinary potential. Its preliminary construction cost estimate of $1.5 billion to harvest and recover 2 MAF per year of Delta runoff is a rough order of magnitude lower than any other possible solution. Moreover, it may well be feasible to safely harvest more than 2 MAF from the Delta every year. An authoritative 2017 study by the Public Policy Research Institute describes so-called uncaptured water, which is the surplus runoff, often causing flooding, that occurs every time an atmospheric river hits the state. According to the study, benefits provided by uncaptured water are above and beyond those required by environmental regulations for system and ecosystem water, emphasis added. The study goes on to claim that uncaptured water flows through California's Sacramento slash San Joaquin Delta averaged 11.3 million acre feet per year over the 1980 to 2016 period. For this to come from some of the most respected water experts in California is very encouraging. The average quantity of uncaptured water flowing through the delta that is above and beyond those required by environmental regulations for system and ecosystem water averages 11.3 MAF per year. An environmentally friendly delta diversion project has several appealing aspects. Unlike the delta pumps, these extraction channels would not harm fish, nor would their operation alter the current of the delta, which brings the risk of saltwater intrusion. Their high capacity may make building the controversial delta tunnel unnecessary. Storing high volumes of water in San Joaquin Valley aquifers with a known capacity in excess of that of Lake Mead and Lake Powell combined would eliminate the need for more reservoirs while also making possible almost a limitless capacity to store water from wet years to use in dry years.